Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is December 6th and this is my weekly shop update. So it's been uh, a little bit on the uneventful side this week, which is kind of a nice change of pace since I finished up everything related to the sideboard last week. The video for the channel here was the last major thing with that. So that, that process is always quite like a marathon producing all of those instructional videos every single week until it's done it gets to be quite the grind. So this week is a little bit slower, which is kind of nice. I have been working on a couple of uh, videos, I guess, or video concepts. The first one is a video of me to make for a really long time. And that is actually something I'm really excited about. It is like the, uh, I guess the background or my story, I guess, of how I got into woodworking, how I progressed through the years before I got on YouTube and started this channel. Everything, that I've done for the last, when I started this channel, 2014. So what year is it now? Five years? So everything I've done for like the last five years is documented here, but everything I did before then is not. So I get you know the question a lot, like how'd you get to woodworking? How'd you learn? And then I also get sort of the, I guess the people don't really understand that kind of come through and criticize, which I totally get. But I think what people don't quite understand is that I was not born or I didn't like wake up one day and have this shop with these tools in it. And I did not just wake up with the skills to use these tools to produce the things that I do. Uh, it was a learning process and I'm 10 years into this now. So everything you see me do is after 10 years of working at this. So I want to be able to show that progression that yes, I started with nothing just like everyone else, no skills and no tools and built it up to this point. I want to share the story of how I got to where I am or where I was when I started the channel in 2014. And this is the other one. Well, actually this is a, I guess a mini series that I've been working on. So I think in October I shot a couple of videos comparing how to cut slabs versus cutting boards. So I have these boards here that I cut and just finished stacking and I have the slabs that will come in as well to dry. So the first video is going to be on cutting boards, the second one is going to be on doing slabs, and the third one is going to be, uh, I'm calling it the less glamorous side of sawing your own lumber. <laughs> so that includes getting it all stacked and ready to dry, doing all the cleanup and dealing with all the waste, and then I'm going to go into a little more detail on my drying process here in the basement. When I did my air drying lumber video uh, like four years ago, I tried to keep that a little more generalized, and the sun decided to come out. So that video was a little more uh, genericized and this time I wanted to just be really specific about the things that I do here to get my stuff dry and the methodology that I've been using to dry my own stuff for uh, however many years I've been doing that, like six years, seven years, something like that. Every single project you see me make has been with lumber that I've dried here in this spot. I'm looking to start that series coming out in January. So part one and part two will be, uh, I think, two weeks apart in January. And then part three, I'm kind of tentatively scheduling for late February. That way, this stuff will be pretty much fully dried by then. So another little thing I was working on is another set of these, like, cheese boards or charcuterie boards or whatever. I made a few of these last year just to kind of prototype the concept. You know, they're just literally firewood offcuts from a sawmill. that just get planed and cut and shaped and finished and they make nice little gifts. And one of the things that I wanted to do this year was make a video about making these, uh, which is a little different than what I did last year. Last year was more like kind of prototyping the concept and just kind of like figuring out where things are gonna go. Now that I have an idea, I wanna show like how long it actually takes to make, uh, I guess, one unit when you're making, this is a batch of 25. So the video is gonna focus on that more. This is exactly how long it took to make it, I'm not really focused too much on making the video. A lot of it's going to be time lapse, and I think it's going to be kind of a fun, uh, a fun video. It's going to be a little different than my normal stuff, but I am very much looking forward to that as well because this is actually a very, very fast process. I am, I think, an hour and a half into it so far. At 25 of them, <laughs> I don't know, seems pretty good. So that's what I'm up to this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a piano stool by Dougal. He is a naval architect by profession and he likes the contrast of metal and wood as with old wooden yachts. It's made from macrocarpa, laminated Tasmanian oak, and stainless steel rigging and tubing. 
and he made this stool for his kids. Next this week is a modem stand by Jake. Jake says this project was all about using leftover walnut that was taking up too much space in his small shop. The drawer front is made from Hatoba, where he tried his first hand-cut half-blind dovetails. There is a spot in the back of the drawer for a surge protector, and he cut slots into a strip of wood that act as anchor points for cable management ties. Next is a set of green and green side tables by Craig. There's a set of four hickory and walnut tables for his parents and one from mahogany that he made for himself. The walnut bases feature leg indents and the hickory tops have walnut breadboard splines. The mahogany table has a more traditional green and green look with ebony splines and plugs. And you can find Craig over on Instagram and Facebook. Last of this week is a 3D lake map by Mitch. The map is of a remote lake that he fishes in Ontario. It's 3mm plywood cut to size and then a scroll saw is used to cut out the contours. The edges were smoothed with a Dremel and the layers were painted with a progressively darker acrylic paint. So last week I told you I was going to have a new segment here on the shop update. I just wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit more about that kind of going forward. So first off, I'm not really sure if it's going to be every week, but I will do what I can to get it in as much as possible. I think it's going to be a fun segment. Uh, second of all, every segment will have a disclosure so you know how I came about having this thing I'm telling you about, if it happens to be an actual uh, product, if it's not just like a technique or answering some questions about something, I think having a disclosure in um, the things you see just helps to make it really transparent about you know, why I'm showing you what I am, I guess. And lastly, the name, the winner of the name contest, the unofficial, unknowingly needed name contest, <laughs> Yeah, Brad over on Twitter suggested, let me tell you about something. So, let me tell you about something. So this week I have a movie for you, the Feld documentary. The filmmaker sent me uh, Blu-ray and DVD to check out, and I really, really enjoyed this documentary. It is about saving trees in the urban setting and turning them into something. Let me show you a quick clip from the trailer. I've always taken the trees around me for granted. It wasn't until I saw a fallen tree and wondered if I could make something beautiful out of it that suddenly the trees around me took on new meaning, new potential. Looking for a play. In foster care, you, you keep the kids in, while they're going through the court systems. and So we do eat at about the same time every night. I think it's something they can depend on. Now we're gathered around the table. At the present time, there's really nobody that's seriously trying to keep trees or urban lumber out of the landfill. And we just want to see this be used and, and passed down from generation to generation. There are more than 130 million acres of uh, urban and community forest in the United States. We're, we're really just missing an opportunity. There are these pieces that could be used to build a stronger economy, and we're not using them. The last remaining urban natural resource is being thrown away? No, not gonna happen. So the documentary chronicles the journey that Silas and James took to turn a tree that came down in the neighborhood into a couple of dining tables. Both of them made different tables using different designs and it was really cool at the end to see the two tables with the two different designs and just knowing that they both came from the same tree. And along the way they've um, I guess interspersed a lot of really great interviews with some really great craftspeople and sawyers that are trying to save a lot of the urban trees from going into the landfill. And it's just a really great positive message that um, I guess societally isn't really heard that much. I mean, I guess if you're watching my videos, you've kind of seen this happen before, but out there in the rest of the world, this might be something new to um, people that are just kind of living their lives, not in the woodworking space. So definitely check out the movie. I will leave you a link to where you can get the, the physical version of this, this movie, the Blu-ray or the DVD. It's also streaming on Amazon if you want to check that out. And they have also have a companion book, The Art and Craft of Wood, that you can check out as well. This kind of goes through the whole urban sourcing process. If you want to make your own things out of wood that you saw yourself, I'll leave you a link to this as well. So I think that's all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.